on the subject, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. Uh, if you look at 1 Kings, and we won't be long this evening, just a few minutes. <clears throat> he went out and did a visitation uh, out the morning service, and Mrs. Wilson was in good spirits. Mrs. Uh, Well was doing great, and the others that we visited with, Garcia and Miss Annette, all were doing uh, wonderful. So we had a great <clears throat> visit with all of them. And appreciate of those who are taking part in that ministry. Uh, going out, but by God's grace, uh, it could be uh, any of us uh, in, in other similar situations. And I'm, I'm reminded of some pictures I saw uh, individuals who have been touched by the, uh, the hurricane and all those things, the aftermath of it. Uh, some nursing home residents down in uh, one of the areas uh, sitting inside those nursing homes with water up to their chest. Sitting there in the churros, helpless, not able to do anything, stand for themselves, why they were not evacuated prior to that. Uh, that's the question to be asked and answered. But see those images, those individuals sitting there, and the first thing, the only thing that came into my mind is, what if that was my family member? What if that was my family member? What, 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 what was, that was me? Uh, so we have to have passion uh, toward those who have been touched by different things like that, because by God's grace, uh, could be us. Right. And I will find it. Right. Let's keep that in mind as we uh, have opportunities to minister to them. But in 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, just to pick up a little bit and carry on from what we left off this morning, talking about uh, the wisdom of preparation, I had uh, lunch with Brother Poole, and I was telling him the difficulties of uh, trying to put my sermons together this week. and. I'm going to tell myself here, I'm going to tell fire myself, I'm going to leave you off and like that, I, I need the money, amen. But I had difficulties coming up with the sermons this weekend. As we sit there eating lunch, and he can put it away. <coughs> he can put it away. <laughs> As we sit there eating lunch, I was telling him, I said, well, you know, we got to get up to the building at 3, 4, 5, I got to go and check on the dog, at least in the drive of town. And I said, I don't have time, I need to be going and eating the sermon. And he said, well, how about Solomon? I was like, we're going to preach hell, amen? So, this is Brother Poole's sermon, if it don't come out right. Uh -huh. <laughs> he gave me that idea. But if we look at our Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning with some morning, we talked this morning about wisdom. And wisdom being the, uh, uh, having the, the knowledge and the ability to make the right choices at the opportune time. And we spoke about wisdom being the principal thing, or the foundational base of things, and it says in Proverbs 4, 7, Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all that getting, get understanding. And we understood, we talked about the story about the, uh, the, ten, the ten virgins, and how five of them were not prepared, five were prepared. They all had the same invitation, they all had the same information, they all had the same opportunity to, to get prepared, and they all had the same advance warning, but five of them were not able to get into the wedding uh, ceremony because they, they, they Jesus called them foolish. They, they failed to take the opportunity that they had to be prepared. They lacked wisdom because Jesus referred to the other five who were well prepared as being wise. So wisdom is very, very important in the big scheme of things. Amen? And when we talk about wisdom, it's, it's hard to talk about wisdom without uh, <clears throat> talking about Solomon. Uh, we refer to Solomon as being the wisest uh, man ever to live, and God, uh, the scripture tells us that there, 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 will be, there was never one as wise before him, and there will never be one as wise after him. So you find somebody when I'm talking about they wise and Solomon, they just lying, okay? They just lying, but the Bible tells the truth. See, there was never one as wise before, and there will never be any as wise after him. So Solomon is the wisest man, amen, that ever <coughs> lived. So let's look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 real quick here for a few minutes. <clears throat> now, I've been having trouble with my coat earlier, well, late last week and stuff, so I guess it's carried over. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1. And Solomon made a finish with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made it in a building his own house, <coughs> and the house of the Lord, and walled the Jerusalem round about. On the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord in those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in these statues of David his father, only 
He sacrificed a burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, but there was a great high place, a thousand burnt offerings to Solomon offered upon the altar. In Gibeon, verse 5, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. God saw something lacking in Solomon. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, and thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, and it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a, a great people that cannot be numbered uh, nor accounted for more than two. He says here, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because Thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life. These are the obvious things that many of us put in that position would have asked for, amen. Uh, most men, I think it would be safe to say, uh, put in that position, ask whatever it is that you want. These are the things that most people be inclined to, to make a request for. Amen. And has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, God says, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there, were, there was none like thee before thee, amen. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And he's talking about in the matter of judging and discernment and understanding and basically over all wisdom. He said, there's never been anybody before and there will never be anybody after you, so I'm going to like this. And it says, I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And then he says, all this is continued upon, if thou wilt walk in my ways to teach my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then will I lengthen, then I will lengthen thy days. So because Solomon chose to make this uh, request of God and ask, what is it that I can do for you, amen? Solomon used, I believe, uh, wisdom in what he asked God for. You see, he didn't take the easy road that many would travel. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for revenge against those who were his enemies. But he took this opportunity, and I believe he made, it was a showing of something that was already in Solomon. Solomon had what it took to be a wise person. This decision that Solomon made, this request, I believe was one based on wisdom. And then God built on top of that and said, I'm going to give you wisdom to a degree that no one before or after you will ever be able to match it. I believe we can learn a lot by Solomon, from Solomon. Amen. And soon after, Solomon was put to a test. Soon after making this request of God, he was put to a test. And this test that he was put to showed to everyone that this man truly does possess wisdom. They had never been uh, able, they had never been in the audience of one with such wisdom. Wisdom is important, but I believe it's more important that we have the wisdom of God. Amen. You see, there was a Wisdom that is of the world. I believe it's referred to as being devilish, devilish, sensuous, amen? But we want the wisdom as children of God. We want that wisdom that comes forth from God. James says, if any lack wisdom in James chapter 1, let him ask. Solomon, way before then, amen? Solomon asked. God said, what is it that I can do for you? 
Solomon asked for a understanding, amen, heart to be able to judge. And God opened up his mind and granted him wisdom such as had never been seen before and would never be seen again after. How do we know that? Because that's exactly what the scripture says, amen? Mm -hmm. And then we look at this example that immediately came into play. It says in verse number uh, uh, 15, And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Solomon came to make this offering a different person, a different individual. This now is an individual who has wisdom that exceeds anyone who has ever existed before him and will exceed anyone. And I know many of us believe that we are wise. Amen. We are wise. And I don't doubt that many of us are. But we will never have the wisdom of Solomon. And we can pray for wisdom, but according to God's word, there will never be any after him with that level of wisdom. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I think this example here, I could never have even thought of an example like this. And I'm going to tell you, this decision Solomon made in this case, well, the bishop never would have made this decision. I've, I've had that thing tied in court for years. And many of us would have, amen? amen. That thing would have been before the Supreme Court and everything. But Solomon presented with this case, and immediately his wisdom kicks in. So it says in verse 16, as I close here, understanding the importance of wisdom, and this wisdom, as you're going to see, this is the wisdom of God being manifest through a man. Mm -hmm. It says, then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. I don't have to stop this lane that door. And one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no strangers unto us in the house, save we uh, two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child supper, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. You know, mother knows their child, amen? amen. Mother knows their child. Amen. Many of us born with peanut heads, amen. A lot of our mothers knew our little peanut heads, amen? They, they mother knows their child. Now, daddy, that may be a whole different thing. He may just go and try and just want to pick up one and go on with it. But mama knows their child, amen? And it says in verse 22, and another one said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So here's the king presented with this great dilemma. And this had to be a utmost importance for this to come before the king. Because surely he had people in this administration, they can handle the matters, but this was a different matter. So this was brought before the king. And watch what happens here. It says, then said the king, the one said, this is my son delivered, and that son is dead, and the other said, neighbor, that son is dead, and my son is delivered. And the king said, bring me a sword. Yeah, had to be people in the audience going, hmm? what? He's bringing a sword. Who would have seen this coming? Amen. And he brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. And give half to the one and half to the other. Now when the king made a decree, there was nobody who could change it. There was no one that they could say, uh, King, I object. When the king made a decree, that was considered law. That's why it's dangerous to have kings, amen? Because mm -hmm. kings ain't always right. The king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one, half to the other. Then spake the woman who 
whose the little child was unto the king, for her vows joined upon her, and she said, this woman do this, this is my baby. And notice what she said, oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. And they obviously saw the seriousness and the graveness of King Solomon. So he wasn't here joking to the victim of the sword and, uh, and cutting in half. He was dead serious, amen, as we would say, about splitting this child in half. And they saw that. And this mother says, Lord, don't do that. Hmm. Give her the little child and the wise play it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Mm -hmm. That was it. Solomon knew without a shadow of a doubt. And this was all based on the knowledge they had available to him and this ability to make a righteous decision of choice. That's what wisdom is. What happened in the, using the knowledge that we have and using our ability to make a righteous choice. Sons of Brother Bishop, that was a hard choice. That was a righteous choice. That was a righteous decision. Because he knew in his heart of hearts that the mother of that child would not allow anything to happen to that child. Mm -hmm. Even if she was the leader of that child and had to see her child, that she knows her child raised by somebody else, she was not willing to see harm come upon that child. Amen. That, brothers and sisters, is wisdom. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel, you know this message spread right here, right? All Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. And they feared the king or respected the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. You talk about an example of what wisdom looks like. Solomon had wisdom. We too can have wisdom. We can have wisdom from God. And all we have to do is ask. Mm -hmm. In James chapter 1, as I close it. In James chapter 1, we referenced it a few minutes ago. But in James chapter 1, as I close it. He says, if any of you, James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Don't ask of the preacher. Don't ask of the teacher. Don't ask of your husband right. Don't ask of man, but ask of God. How do I know I like wisdom, Brother Bishop? Yeah. If every decision that you sit down and seriously take a shot at ends up being a bad decision hmm. or their own decision, you need to ask somebody, amen. And I recommend that you ask God. Ask God. Because you're not going to get any better than getting from God. So I respect this person, I respect that person, I respect their opinion, I respect their, that's fine and dandy. But ask of God. And once you ask of God, you need to ask in faith, not wavering. Amen. And then you can go and ask others opinions, amen. You can ask others and hope to, to receive an a answer based on wisdom by them, but because you have wisdom from God, you're going to know whether or not what you're receiving from them is what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Or just a bad piece of advice. Amen? Mm -hmm. If you lack wisdom, ask for God. The wisdom of God. And when you ask wisdom, ask for wisdom, ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And don't go to God being no mind. Amen? Because God already knows. 
Make your request known. If you lack wisdom, and wisdom is important, it gives us the ability. Uh, uh, it's, it's when we use the knowledge and ability that we have in order to make righteous decisions. A lot of people are knowledgeable, amen? A lot of people have knowledge for out of the earth, but when it comes time to make a decision on something, especially a wise decision, they fall to peace. They fall mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. It's a principal thing that you talk about this morning. Therefore, get wisdom. With all that get it, get understanding. As children of God, we cannot afford to be without wisdom. Mm -hmm. Especially in the sense that this is something that we can ask God for. So he said, open my eyes. Give me the ability to use the knowledge that I have to make righteous decisions. God is not going to let us make bad decisions. Amen. Mm -mm. If we are asking for wisdom and we do it the way that he has directed us. The wisdom of God. Pray for it and expect to it. Receive it. This is the lesson this evening. Take this with you as you everybody off work tomorrow. Amen. But when you go back to work Tuesday, you probably ain't leave tomorrow. Yeah, amen. <laughs> but when you get back to work Tuesday, you're going to leave tomorrow, tomorrow. As long as we deal with people, we're going to need wisdom. Amen. amen. But take this wisdom with you as we start this week. The wisdom of God. Pray for it. Expect to it. Receive 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 it. Let's not be like foolish. If you're this evening, you need to pray for yourself, someone else, you pick it known. If you're tonight, you're not a child of God, you're going to be a child of God, you're going to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, the Spirit, and those in the third day. If you're going to be what's he willing to believe it? Have a change of mind, have a repent, be willing to confess that he is the Son of God, have all your sins washed away in water, bring baptism, and that's why we're using life to add to the Son of God, to the Son of God, a joint power of Jesus Christ. And he says, Be not faithful unto death, I give crown of life. This wants to require a whole lot of wisdom along that way. Amen. If this night not a child of God, which is not a child of God, the appropriate substance of us, make the knowledge of the same substance.